Yeah, hello and welcome back uh, to another Ask Me Anything uh, or basically an interview with our uh, CTO Moritz. Uh, hey, and uh, welcome back, Moritz. Hello, yeah, Luke, and thanks for having me. Welcome, yeah. community. <laughs> Uh, so today we have a special AMA and uh, most of the people have already been waiting on this for a long time. Uh, we will show the first gameplay footage. Uh, and by speaking of gameplay footage, I don't mean that uh, the game is ready at all. So since we're a Web3 company, we want to uh, take you on the road with us and uh, would encourage you also to ask questions uh, down below in the comments or submit proposals. If you see something uh, where you want to have a deeper dive into, Uh, or if you want to know more about uh, or have suggestions, feel free to put them in the comments. But otherwise, um, uh, I would start with some general questions that the community had. And then afterwards, Moritz is showing us uh, how the first look on the town builder will look like. So I'm really excited for this and I hope you are too. Uh, so let's start with a question uh, from the community, uh, which uh, Triceratops has. He's one of our landowners in, uh, in Discord. Um, he asked if it's uh, possible to technically share the land uh, with another person. Is that possible, Moritz? Or all right, so um, the the game itself affords um, that one player owns the land and other players can play on it. This type of sharing is kind of the fundamental game design that we have. Um, we're also internally working on something we call fractional land, fractional NFTs, where we might be able to make it possible for people to buy just a small, small share of a land, um, being kind of their own little clan lord in like a special um, partitioned, a little um, piecemeal land, right? And mm. um, if this is, um, this is going to be possible, or if you would be interested in this, um, please reach out to us on Twitter or on Discord. Um, we would love to hear your use case. We would love to hear what you want to do with it, how many people you would love to have in this uh, group, right? And then, then we can talk about it. But mm. for just the general um, current lands that we're currently selling, um, you can just invite other players onto this. Like you get to choose as the landlord who plays there with you. It's a cooperative experience. Mm. Yeah. Unless, of course, you trust your friends, <laughs> which I, uh, I always recommend, like, uh, don't trust anyone in the first place. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, I mean, if you trust your friends, you can also buy some together. Uh, like if you uh, want to play together with your family, for example, that's possible. But um, uh, uh, he was also asking, so Triceratops, for example, uh, is it possible, for example, to use uh, multi-sig wallets uh, where you um, basically um, have one wallet which is owned by multiple people? Um, actually, yes. So here in, in Moon Gaming, we actually use MPC wallets just to maintain all the digital assets that are associated with the game that we are also handing out to other players, which mm -hmm. um, are a similar thing to a multi-sig wallet. Like multiple people have some sort of a key share and some people can make it in approved transactions. Other people have to um, sign together. So everybody has to approve and, and vote for mm -hmm. this together. So um, to simply express this, our NFTs can be held with any wallet that can hold those Polygon NFTs, the standard. Um, Hmm. PRC721 okay. NFT, for example, right? So, um, however, um, in the game, this may be difficult to, to use, right? Um, how often do you actually need to interact with NFTs? If it's something like the land, you don't interact with it on the blockchain a lot. You have it, right? The property, the owning yeah. of it is the most valuable part, right? Um, and that, that is expressed just once and that doesn't change very often. Whereas if you would have this, like, for example, on a hero unit or something that, that changes position a lot or um, changes equipment a lot, then using an, an external wallet may be difficult to use with the game. Maybe just tedious. You have to sign and um, countersign and multi-sign mm -hmm. all of the transactions all the time. Um, this is why we provide these super, let's call them hot wallets that are custodial wallets on NEFTA for people for like the average gameplay use, right? This is mm. where people hold their, their hottest assets, the stuff that they're using every day. Um, because they would like to have as much of that exist on the blockchain as possible. Mm. And that's actually something unique about Medieval Empires, right? Using a custodial wallet also to onboard people that are originally coming from Web2 and are not that into the, uh, the crypto space. So. Um, since we have a huge following uh, based on uh, on the game design that we have, uh, we will also try to onboard the pay players that don't know what crypto is basically in the beginning. Uh, so we make it fun entering that area as well. I, I, at least I, I 
hope that it will be like this and I'm, and I'm for sure um but yeah uh, speaking about the game itself uh i'm really excited now to uh, uh have a walkthrough with moritz and we show again just the beginning uh on where we are and we will have further updates along the way so if you follow our socials um we will have uh, more than one uh death update ama basically and we will also go through the art because what you will see right now is not the the full game it will develop and there will be other parts on top of it this is just the tech part of it just to make it sure so i will now hand over to moritz and uh, we will have a look onto the map so i'm really excited for this so moritz now let me know what i'm seeing here right now all right um just as a quick overview so we have two major tracks on the thing that we call the town building part of the game where people get to um, build and design and grow their settlements. That's the place where they train their troops. That's the place where they collect the resources. That's the place where the people and the subjects live. And um, those two tracks are one, the um, we call it the look and feel prototype, the gameplay prototype. This is what I'm going to be showing now. And then we also have a visual vertical slice prototype that is like a more refined version. It has the, the visual targets. That thing is moving very fast. And um, mm -hmm. I'm waiting for our art director to um, bring this to a point where we say, this is the snapshot we want to show to the community. Mm -hmm. However, what I can show now is, um, is the look and feel um, part that we're working on right now. This is, uh, has been in developer for, for, for some time. Um, by a team of six or seven people, right? Um, so this is um, a dedicated team that is going to focus only on the town gameplay. Um, mm -hmm. What you're seeing here is this is um, what in game we call a gray box, right? We remove all the textures um, to ensure that the shapes of the buildings can be recognized, um, that the lighting is correct on the technical side, and then later we just load in the real textures. Um, also, these are, for example, something that the Visual Vertical Slice team is, is, is developing at the moment. Mm -hmm. so, so I have to get, get Peter on the next AMA to show us how. to get Peter on the next AMA. He's got some really cool stuff to show already, yeah. um, and we're waiting for the perfect moment for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if, if you look at this, um, you will have uh, some sort of terrain around which you can actually um, expand, right? And also start building there. Um, mm -hmm. At the beginning of the game, we will only have these footpaths that generate between the buildings and these generate automatically. Currently, these are very straight because there are um, placeholder graphics, but they will be um, replaced with nice arcing and meandering little organic looking footpaths. So mm -hmm. all of the buildings, this is one of the things where uh, we'll work on the UI, you can, you can build them, select them, and place them, for instance, like an archery range, and the game enters into this bird's eye view mode. And um, you can place the building, snap it, and then the builds, um, the roads will be placed. Um, mm -hmm. We're also build, um, letting the players move the building or upgrade the buildings to higher levels. Right? And um, mm -hmm. we're currently experimenting with how much space you want to keep around the buildings. Um, we currently, we can rotate them in 90 degree increments, but one of the um, Initial targets was a more organic look, where they are all kind of slight of slightly crooked, um, slightly slightly off kilter, so people can build like very organic looking cities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, some of the buildings that we see here is this is a farm, this is um, this is a sawmill, um, this is a, a barracks, and this is a, um, an archery center. Um, mm. Here are some mines, and um, these sawmills, for example, these 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 wood trucks, um, they actually pro produce produ uh, produce produce um, Wood resources, yeah, wood lumber, yeah, sure. timber, right? That you can actually right. collect here, right? And it will mm. be added to your to your resource stores. In the future, um, these things can be traded on um, on our internal market, and um, as such, then also in theory on exchanges, right? Mm. Um, um, these can also be exchanged for crypto rewards, um, and they also kind of live on the blockchain, right? There's um, like two levels on these resources that make them one live very fast in the game, so you can very quickly collect them. But then when you want to sell them, they actually become a blockchain auction where people can bid mm -hmm. on your wood, on your quality goods. And mm -hmm. um, these are, of course, very basic building resources, whereas um, other uh, buildings um, and other lands that you may own have special, unique resources, like almost strategic mm. resources, things that only exist in one place. And these will unlock access to special units and so on. Mm. Um, yeah, this building is an upgrade of the library. This is where um, the research tree is going to be at, um, uh, accessible, where you can research your technologies, your technology tree. Currently, we are just doing a linear upgrade for these buildings. 
um, mm. while we figure out what makes it um, feel good to everyone. Also okay. trying to make the camera feel good, like you can you can you can smoothly flick it. It will, it will move around like this, and um, just give us an overall very solid feel. Then mm -hmm. in the next step, we're gonna put in all the textures, put in uh, more post processing, uh, more detailed textures, and clean up the buildings and the geometry where we see, hey, this building looks a little bit too similar to another building, or this roof needs a little bit more structure, and so on. And we also um, match the uh, polygon budgets because um, we want to make this game accessible to as many players as possible and also make it look as good as possible. So there's always this trade-off that you have in game development with mm -hmm. how much geometry, how many textures, how much uh, lighting, how many shadows, and how many polygons and so on do you push to the user's graphics card, right? And um, mm -hmm. usually what you do then in the game, you can say, like, I want to play in higher detail or medium detail or so on. Or if you want to play on your phone, you always show the medium detail version, for example. And um, this is the process that comes once we have a visual target and once we have our, we call them rendering budgets. Hmm. We also have a, a 3D model of the <clears throat> what we think it could look like in the end. Uh, so later we can also reveal re that to just give the community an overview on uh, how it will actually look like. Uh, what we're seeing right now is a, a Crusader town, if uh, I'm not mistaken, right? Exactly. This is um, the basic building set that we call the Crusader set. Um, most of the English Crusader players will have these. If mm -hmm. you were, for example, to play in Northern Ankara, where the uh, Turkic tribes are at home, you will get a very specific set of buildings. Um, mm -hmm. Some of these building designs, especially decorational designs, and so on, can also be traded between players. So you can put a special building into your city that another player had. Um, this is this is um, most this is for example on the NFTs we have these decoration things right like yeah. um, this was some of the things that um, are the unique features that you could have gotten in some of the lands that we had for sale and um, these are things that are um, going to be very coveted by players because these make the cities unique they will also show that you're a very developed um, mm. uh, faction a developed emir a developed um, developed crusader right is that like, okay hey, we have um, trade yeah. we have exchange with others look at this I have this. Thing. I have this um, this this particular type of statue, this particular type of material that is actually not available where I live, but we get this. We have connections, right? And you can show this off to other players this way. Yeah, Felix uh, walked us through also the, the decorations. Uh, and we started also to implement a, a, a small mini game, basically, or a daily reward system in Discord. So if you go into our Discord, later on, you can become a scroll master for coming back every day and collecting scrolls. So. Uh, don't miss out on that because later on you can maybe have that's still in the in the planning phase but you can have a standard uh, i think it's called standard standard uh in um uh, in your town which shows that you are a scroll master for example so uh check our other socials as well because we will implement the parts that uh the community develops or where they participate in also in the game i mean for sure that will come later but uh, we start planning it already um, so if I want to, um, if I, if I look on the map, for example, if I want to be, uh, in the Kahi tribe, I should, uh, uh, get a land in, in North Ankara, for example, but on the world map, I also saw that we already have the, um, the, the English part, basically the crusader part. So, uh, depends on which faction I want to be, I have to get a land in that area or how, how will it work? Or can I just say now I switch? I want to become a crusader now because I'm team crusader or I want to be team Kahi. How does it work then? Um, so yeah, let me, let me show you, show, show, show what we're talking about here. Right. So, um, mm -hmm. this is actually the, uh, an, an, um, a version of the, um, of the newest build that we're just putting live. Um, oh. some of you already have seen this Akko or Accra, depending on what language you're playing in this is where um Edward Longshanks's crusades basically started right and some of the crusaders um, states around here were founded we've already pre-created a lot of the provinces here and we'll be opening them up for gameplay and eventually these provinces will come into an area for especially like um um, um Alexandretta um Iskander here and so on um where um where there was a lot of conflict 
right? Mm -hmm. Where um, they, um, for example, the English wanted to capture this. And here there will be provinces that are contested where basically both factions will have some sort of holding and there may be even PVP gameplay. Um, some of um, them, um, especially the ones directly at the front will be um, highly contested where, where you can directly interact also with um, the other faction more as an enemy and rather than a prospective uh, neighbor, right? Because mm -hmm. these are the homelands of the Turks and the um, Abbasids and the, the Bedouins and so on, right? So um, mm. that, for example, could then be uh, something where we can see the you know, often mentioned historical battles, for example, taking place, right? Uh, at those areas where there's huge conflict. Uh, yeah, hmm. exactly. Like this would be places, very um, visual markers. Um, we can also look look here into these. This is the, the first, um, Akka is the first province that we're going to put out and we're going to set some of these lands for sale uh, in the near future as one of our mm. um, coming, um, coming land sales where people can actually buy into the um, Crusader faction. Mm. I already know a couple of people <laughs> who yeah, are waiting yeah. for this one. Yeah, and if you're playing up here in, in, in Northern Ankara, this is a player versus environment province. This is going to be only Turkic tribes, maybe some sub-factions. We have to see how we identify this because your heroes that you build, you will mm. put together a certain identity for that hero, a certain lineage. So they can also have cultural influences that may be from other states and they might bring some of that into your army, into your fighting style, and also maybe into your resource economy. Hmm. And um, um, le let me ask one final question. So, um, so right now we have those uh, gray, uh, gray boxed uh, houses and everything. What are the next steps um, on developing this one into a game where where uh, it's looking better and you have maybe people running around or uh, what? What will be the future in let's say the next two weeks or three weeks, uh, and then in, in half a year? So yeah, so in the next couple of weeks, we're going to replace some of the buildings that are low geometry placeholders, like this one here in the corner. This one doesn't doesn't really have a lot of detail yet, right? Mm -hmm. With something that is a lot more refined, like these buildings that have all these little details on them and so on, right? We're mm -hmm. gonna um, figure out the rendering um, in terms of how many layers of textures, what type of normal maps, what type of resolutions of textures. I mean, we are, these are already textured. We just remove the textures because for the gameplay prototyping, this is not what we care about, right? And this may make it hard to read if sometimes like this wood is maybe the, kind of the, the wrong color and this, this wood is maybe looking better and so on. Also, they all have these little details. You can see them here that there's like this, there's this little bit of mesh geometry for um, a, a flag and also here for some, for some banners. Right. Mm. And um, that's the customization and, and most likely and this, this 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 is where um, where a faction flavor is going to be added or your own flavor is going to be added. And these are, are going to be animated and, and, and visible. Right. So mm. um, these are special materials. These are transparent. We also um, have excluded them for now. Right. And more and more of these will get added. So you get like these feelings, especially marketplaces and bazaars and and, and, and buildings that have like cover, especially for desert areas that are covered in uh, in, in canvas and cloth uh, that throw shade um, and, and so on. Right? This is very important. So, um, but this is like the base geometry, getting all the buildings to like a readable silhouette, then making this feel really good to place them, right? And I think we're pretty close. Um, mm -hmm. And also building out this resource economy, meaning that there will be upgrade animations, upgrade times, um, you have to pay for your upgrades and so on. And all of this is going to happen in the next um, couple of weeks. And then in half a year, which is like when we're approaching the public beta and so on, this is like all going to be textured. There's going to be um, animations. Um, you're probably going to see some units come out of those buildings when you have trained them. Um, there's going to be environment, right? Um, this is actually a test map that doesn't have us, but we have like these really beautiful mountain backdrops and so on that just, just embed this town later. And currently here, we're just putting on these um, these little speech tree trees as, as placeholders, right? But mm. um, in the visual vertical slides and also in, in another version of this gameplay prototype, I've actually seen like these mountains that um, really give this um, these cities a feeling like they're embedded into the country where you are actually building them. Mm. I mean, we, we have a lot of art already out, so people can imagine how, for example, a Kahi tent would look like or uh, uh, how how the, how it will feel, but uh, then let me get uh, try to get uh, Peter uh, for the for the uh, visual vertical slides in as well, uh, so we can have a look on how it could look in the future, at least from from the outside. Uh, but I already love the the tech 
uh, part of it and how you place your little towns and uh, collect your resources. It's basically what I at least expected on how it will be. Um, is there anything else uh, you want to um, want to mention to the community uh, before we finish this one? Um, stay tuned for some really cool stuff that's coming, right? Um, I've seen glimpses of the of the visual slides that are just uh, really impressive that really show where this game is going. Um, once we get um, this out to the first couple of players to actually give us feedback on how this feels to like what we call user testing, this will also um, give us more speed to iterate on these things. And um, yeah, uh, be strong and conquer, right? <laughs> Yeah, perfect. All right. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you guys, because every time I have you on here, I see something new myself, uh, which I really like. We should do that more often. Uh, and in the future, we will have uh, uh, regular dev updates. But uh, we don't want to bother our, our team too much, because if we bother them all day from marketing side, then they cannot work. So. Uh, but if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, we also had that with uh, with Felix and the other guys. Um, uh, put them in the community. Our community managers uh, like Isabella or Karl Sakal, Shaki, they will help you uh, uh, gather all the questions and then we come up with a new AMA. Uh, and yeah, thanks, Moritz. It's always a pleasure talking to you and uh, see you then hopefully next week or in maybe in two weeks. I give you a little bit time to <laughs> to uh, create a little bit more and um, then I will get back to you. It's been a pleasure. Um, looking forward to uh, seeing you again on the MA and um, I guess seeing a lot of people to the team offset that we're doing in Berlin this week. Yeah, so on Wednesday. Getting we everyone together everyone. to really focus on the right work to do and um, mm -hmm to share our progress among ourselves because we're this very distributed team, but we make take care to get together to get, um, and, and really align everyone and everything. Yeah. Perfect. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye. See you next time.